getting started is really easy. One of the things that you're going to do is procure those services already packaged, pre-configured, preloaded with drivers and firmware ready to deploy ESXi on both the DPU and the x86 host. This is what we call the ESXi unified installation. This unified installation follows the same exact process that you do right now to load ESXi on an x86 host with an additional change, which is selecting the DPU where you want to install ESXi. The next step after ESXi has been installed, you have added your ESXi host to vCenter. You would take an additional step of creating or enabling offloading capabilities via a vSphere distributed switch. This distributed switch on vSphere 8, we have an option to enable this offloading capability. Then after that, you would add the host directly to that distributed switch, just like you do now. After that, we're going to go out to NSX Manager and install the NSX agent via VLCM. So this process, it's the same as you do now for ESXi host. We're going to manage the DPUs, not directly. You would see that under vCenter, the data processing units do not show up as separate hosts. They're actually hidden because they are part of the host itself. They're not separate hosts. But when we install the NSX agents, they would go directly into the host and the host would understand Hey, I know I have a DPU and I'm going to pass this agent just like we do with ESXi. We manage the host the same way, but we know that there is another instance of ESXi that we are leveraging and we're going to manage it the same way. And lastly, we have the option to configure individual VMs for UPTV2 support, which is something that Megana talked about, which is a different mode that we're introducing with Distributed Services Engine. So let's go through our first demo. First demo is the ESXi installation piece. So here we see a server that is power off. So the first thing we're going to do, it's connect or map that image for vSphere, for ESXi. Same way we do it now, we can map the ISO directly to it, and we're going to connect it and then power on the x86 server. Right, so this is exactly the same process. After we power on, you're going to see that at the beginning, when it's loading the BIOS, it's going to find that DPU and it's going to understand, hey, I know I have the DPU and I'm going to need that later. So here we go through the same process. And this is the only change you're going to see. Here you can see that we have the option to install or upgrade ESXi, but it's also giving us an option to install or check that box that says Blue, NVIDIA Bluefield 2. That is the only change in this process where we select DPU and x86 server, and we are installing the exact same image on both locations at the same time. This is not only convenient, but it's also guaranteeing that we have the same exact version on both locations. Again, the DPU and the host are working as one entity, as one brain. Even though there are separate instances of ESXi, separate CPUs, they're working as one. So now let's move on to the next demo. This demo is about enabling the offload capabilities on the distributed switch. First, we're going to go to host and clusters, and we're going to see that this particular host have now a way to see what, what's happening with the DPUs. It's going to show us the CPU and memory utilization on the data processing units. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have added the vCenter to NSX Manager. So in this case, we have already done that, just verifying that it is already connected to the vCenter where DPUs are installed. Now we're going to move on to the network piece and create a new distributed switch. So we give it a name for distributed switches. And we're going to select version 8. This is the new option. So the network offloads capability is going to allow us to select which DPU we're utilizing. So 
we're going to select the DPU here. And after the distributed switch has been created, then we're going to just manage the host just the same way we do and add those compatible hosts. Compatible host means those are the hosts that have the DPUs that we have selected initially to be part of this distributed switch. After the hosts have been added to the switch, we can go back to NSX Manager and create a, an uplink profile. So I'm going to go ahead and create that profile and making sure we're adding those uplinks. So the uplinks we're adding here are those two ports that are part of the one DPU we have installed in this case. We're also going to go ahead and create a transport node profile. We're going to be using this profile later on. And as you can see here, we are selecting the vCenter, the v switch, uh, distributed switch we created, and to overlay transport zones. In this case, we're going to add the uplinks for the VDS. So we have uplink one and uplink two. So now we have created the uplink profile and the transport node profile. So let's move on to the next step. The next demo is about the unified NSX installation on the DPUs and the hosts as well. So we're in NSX Manager, and we're going to change back to the vCenter. Here we can see a cluster that has three nodes, and we're going to click on Configure NSX. We're going to select the transport node profile we already configured, and this is going to start the process of installing the NSX agent on both the host and the DPUs. We're going to see a process bar or how the hosts are getting configured. But you can also see on vCenter, you can see here uh, under each host, we can see the DPU. We're utilizing VLCM to remediate the fact that they don't have the NSX agent installed. And that is exactly what VLCM is doing. It's pushing that image down to both the host and the DPU at the same time. And finally, for the last demo, we're going to go over configuring VMs for UPTV2 support. Again, this is on a per VM basis. While utilizing distributed services engine, the default is MUX mode. If we need want to take advantage of additional features that were released with distributed services engine, such as UPTV2, which is allowing us to do a pass through without losing the features of VMware hypervisors, such as vMotion, HA, DRX, et cetera, this is how you would go ahead and do it. The first thing you would do is create a tier one gateway. We're going to create a gateway in this case. Then we're also going to add a few segments. So in this case, we're going to add an overlay segment to that tier one gateway we just created, give it a subnet. So once we do that, we can see that the overlay segment created in NSX is showing up under that distributed switch that we created on vCenter. Now we're going to create a VLAN segment, configure it for the correct VLAN. And now we're going to go back to vCenter. And now we can see that VLAN segment showing up on vCenter. So we're going to create a VM from this template. It's a Linux VM. And we're going to change a few things as far as uh, some of the options. So we're going to customize the hardware on our virtual machine. We're going to add a couple network adapters. So we're going to go to browse and select a VM BDS for, for the VM. You can see here there's no option for UPTV2. But now when we select one of those segments from NSX, we see the option for UPT support. By clicking the use UPT support, we'll enable that pass through that we have introduced with distributed services engine for UPTV2. Now that VM has the capability of doing pass-through without losing any of the features from VMware.